I am at an urban farm in uh, Memphis and I have access to some lettuce plants here but I can't I'm not going to forge them uh, I have another video about that why I don't forge plants plants because I find the latex doesn't flow very long after I get them home so I'm trying a method that I have read about that used to be used and I have pulled the leaves off this skinny little plant and there's a lot of latex flowing and I'm going to use a wet sponge uh, to get it off uh, pretty easy so I will be back in a minute once I've done this whole plan I've made slices all the way around and I also pulled the leaves off all right so I got all of the latex off of that one and um, this method is just to use a cloth or a sponge oh look something black speck we got in there uh, to remove the latex and then squeeze it into water and then evaporate the water off so I'm gonna continue working on this so I only bled out maybe four or five plants they were really really thin stalks and I just wasn't in the mood for a whole lot of labor there's some plant material in there but that's uh, what came out so I'm going to evaporate the water off of this and we'll see what we have left and I will bring it in the house to show you a really easy way to do that all right I'm gonna um, speed up the process a little bit of evaporating this water by putting the little two ounce jar in my candle warmer and um, I do this sometimes for other things. I make some medications that I use pure grain alcohol Everclear for and then need to evaporate the Everclear off. And if it's a large amount or if I want to do it quickly by boiling the alcohol, then I'll do that outside in a double boiler that's electric so there's no flame. But um, if I'm not in a hurry or I don't want to boil the alcohol, then uh, I'll do this. this. This will also hold a four ounce jar and an eight ounce mason jar as long as they're the same size on the bottom. So I'm going to leave that until the water is fully evaporated and, uh, and we'll see what we have. Uh, it took about four hours and the water has all evaporated and I've um, sort of scraped that into a little glob there because um, once it's really dry, it's pretty hard to scrape off the glass. It's fairly brittle. I mean, you can do it, but it comes off kind of crumbly. So um, this stuff is extremely bitter. That gives me hope that it's going to be fairly strong. And it's taking quite a while to oxidize. I'm assuming that by tomorrow morning, this is going to be a pretty dark brown. All right, this is uh, the result of, after I got up this morning, I actually put that back on the wax warmer attempted to evaporate the water out there's still a little wet usually it gets uh, really brittle when it's fully dried out and at that point I cap it off um, I've read several studies that indicate that keeping this stuff out to the air oxidizing it a lot uh, and also heating it can destroy some of the they're called susquaterpene lactones um, that are the medicinal properties one of them is lactucan and the other one is, um, I have a hard time remembering, it's lactocoprocrin, I think. And the latter is actually a byproduct of the oxidization of the lactucan, but apparently you can take that too far. So I don't really, you know, I'll heat it for tea, but generally I like to harvest the latex and not heat it at all before I consume it. Um, I'm going to let you look oh I should mention that um, this is a, probably if I were to condense it in a ball about the size of a pea which is the um, dosage that I would take for pain relief I have a herniated disc in my back it helps me with that if this is, is less strong I have other plants that require twice the dose so I do not know the answer to that question yet and um, you could see in the video these came from very small plants and this one was just coming into bolting when I harvested it, which is the beginning of uh, when the lacticarium starts to become the strongest. I'm going to put a link to a study down there 
There's a little bug under under my table. Can you see him? Hopefully he's not going to jump out at me. Um, I'm going to let you look at my plants while I talk about some of the studies that I was reading last night. Um, one of them uh, does show a bunch of tests that indicate that the strength of these compounds is greatest from when the plant starts to bolt through flowering and into seeding. Um, that is typical for herbs that you use the aerial plants for in medicine. Um, these plants don't have these compounds for us. It's great that it helps us with pain and other things. They have them for themselves. And um, generally, they're there to ward off pests, to heal damage done by pests, also damage done by the environment, environmental forces. Um, they're there to help the plant and are generally the strongest when the plant is in flower because that's when the plant is protecting itself. Um, so, you know, that makes a lot of sense. That's why I do not harvest these until they at least start to form buds um, or have formed a small cluster of buds. At that point, I will start harvesting and I'll go all the way through uh, to the seed phase. Um, the plants that I harvested yesterday, I generally don't bother um, bleeding those. They're just so small. You get such a tiny amount. This amount that I got yesterday, I mean, I'm pulling this off of, or more off of one plant every day and through the fat flowering phase. So um, I'm just not interested in using the small plants that I have uh, other than for tea. It's just too much work for me. So another study they read last night that was really interesting um, was about the way lacticar well, the compounds in lacticarium interact with the benzodiazepine site of our GABA-A receptors. It has actually been found to be a potentiator of benzodiazepines. And that makes a lot of sense to me because I mentioned in another video that I use Skullcap. I find it to be a stronger sedative, a slightly stronger pain reliever, but I develop a tolerance to it, so I can't use it all the time. And I use Skullcap in different ways, and one of them is a tea. And when I make a Skullcap tea now, I add my dried little thin wild lettuce stalks and leaves, and I find that it is stronger. But when I make a tea itself out of wild lettuce, I'm not really noticing very many effects. So um, valerian is another uh, herb that I use. I make an extract and that also binds to benzodiazepine receptors as Skullcap does. So I have not tried wild lettuce with valerian, but I'm interested to see if there's any potentiation. Um, I thought that was really, really interesting and I will put a link to that. Um, I also suggest that if you are looking into studies of lacticarium that you also look at studies about chicory, which is in the same family, the daisy family, and also has many of the same compounds. Now it has different compounds, but um, there are a plethora of studies out there on chicory. What else did I want to mention? Oh, the susquiterpene lactones. Um, you know, we all know by now that they're an analgesic, that they're anti-anxiety, that they're pain relieving. They've also been used as an anti-malarial treatment. They're also considered neuroprotective. And there's actually a flavonoid in the plant, and I'm uncertain whether it's only in the leaves or not. Um, I don't believe that it's in the lacticarium. It's called corticin, and people who have read Alzheimer's studies may have heard of that. That is showing to be a potential treatment. So I found that really interesting. Um, and maybe I'll look for the, I don't know if I saved the study or not. If I have it, I'll throw a link. Um, what else? Oh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that I found out the term for the, um, the parts of the cell, the tissue in the, uh, in the plant where the, the, um, latex flows. And those are called lactifers, which I thought was really interesting. All right, thanks for watching.